going to dem demonstrate or demonstrate, depending on what part of the world you're in, how I do mindless practicing for one half hour of my of my hopefully more than that practicing. It doesn't always happen. I do a lot of not playing any songs. My goal is to actually go a whole half hour and just just vamp or doodle or around in an imaginary pool of water. Allow all the accidents to happen that lead me in new creative directions that I could never have been that creative myself. Because mistakes are always more creative. And every day you do this, you find your vocabulary, your inventory, just grows a little bit, and it adds up. Pretty soon you can play forever without playing anything. And when you do learn a song, you just pour yourself into that song. You don't, you don't think about You don't think about arranging in advance, necessarily. You just, or if you do, you, you use what you got and you just kind of pour yourself in. The way it doesn't sound wooden. Notice whenever you learn something, it sounds wooden compared to if you're just noodling around because then it's going straight through, it's you. Thank you. 
Get minimalistic in the right hand is nice. Sometimes less is more, especially if you're me. <laughs> I try to get a half hour of noodling. I don't think of numbers or scales or chords. You can even move randomly. It doesn't matter what chord you go to. But you wind up getting into these the traditional patterns. Like you pick a key, you can do six, two, five, ones, or you can do random. I like to think of like, the, remember those magic eight balls? It looked like a, a pool ball, the eight ball, and you know, You'd shake it and it would flip over and it would say, uh, try again, or, or don't make any plans. I see one of those in my mind sometimes when I want to go just random chords, just to, so like here I am, A minor. Now, I try to have some, I'm talking so I can't, make it happen while I'm talking, but here I am, I'm locked in A minor, and then I'm going to let my mind, when I stop talking, I'm going to let the, the next chord that pops up in my mind, I'm just going to go to it, especially hoping it doesn't make sense to the harmony. Okay, it was, a, it was an E flat dominant, see? Here's, here it was again, A minor. Now I 
G minor. Now I see an A flat minor. Back to G minor. See, it's better if they don't make any sense because then you know you're really doing it and you're not falling into a comfortable pattern. Eventually, comfortable patterns of your own may come out of these that wind up being chord substitutions you could use. You just want to let these things come out and they just... They get built on a little bit every day, unconsciously. More chromatics. Full chord chromatics. And the inner voices on these I don't even think about because after a while they just started to started to work. You know, I think of the active, the inner voices. I don't I just kind of do it by feel now, and half the time they're wrong, which is great. You, you get these dissonant inner voices that you actually become part of your your vocabulary. They start becoming syllables or something into their own or vowels and, 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 you, and, you, and you start to like kind of rely on them and use them because they become predictable to your mind and maybe just on a good day you know to somebody they think you like had it all worked out and it was some kind of math formulaic approach to harmony that's not how yeah, I got it with what works. myself to be more metronomic, more steady with my ear. I think that I, I imagine people dancing to what I'm playing, because that makes me really behave. You know, you want to just give them those quarter notes, keep them so they can dance to them. The lazy man's metronome. I can't get an 
enough dramatics into my practice because I'm still not anywhere near where I want to be with them when I've been doing this for years. This is something that started formulating by itself recently. A three finger octave without the octave. I don't know how else to describe it. I'm doing the thumb and then the two middle things, but I'm leaving out the upper. So that, that's leading me somewhere over time. A couple of years from now, it'll be something nice. seconds into this. It's not easy to do a half hour. exercises, the, tech, the hand in and stuff. I mean, I love those. I do like one, you know, like that one. And I'm, it's as far as I got. It's the first one in the book. And I, I just can't, I just can't do those because I feel like um, in certain ways it's programming me the wrong way, even though it would be vastly improving my technique. So I decided to do my own exercises 
but do them this way to where they, they can be poured right into your repertoire whenever you want. You know, you're not, you're not gonna throw in a Hannon exercise or a Cherney exercise. Yeah, you, you'll use the, the fingering and the strength and all that. They're good, I'm not saying not do it. If you could do those, do them. But I, I, just, I just couldn't make myself stick to those. So I do this instead. If you're, I'm gonna exercise my fingers by learning to just communicate. And that way when I'm doing an arrangement, I could do it more spontaneously. And it's not as wooden sounding, because it's real. if we've memorized all the words, you know, and rehearsed them, we're, we're spontaneous. See, that's like doing an exercise, kind of a drill. of um, exercise practice automatically doing endings when you do this because when you every once in a while you wrap up whatever idea you're doing and you and you, you, you do an ending you know and, and I find uh, it makes your endings really strong so when you're when you're doing one of your tunes that you perform you never have problems with an ending you know you don't even have to think about it. You could be talking to somebody and do a spectacular ending. See, just certain, you know, that's how you get them. opened up in front of me from last night, from last night's party. Not a song I usually do, but I had a guest here, I don't know, about a year ago, maybe longer. A friend of a friend, she said she liked to do karaoke, she never sang with a piano. to do this song. She had the words for it. She did a fantastic job interpreting it. I never got over it. It made me love this song. I don't think she realized what she had. She really has what it takes. Probably will never know it herself. some of the stuff I was just doing, practicing randomly. There's that E flat we're doing. I don't know if it's crazy. 
Take a deep breath and hold the word moon as long as you can. <laughs> a little show business tip from Lounge Academy. I'll try to do it here to demonstrate. two hours a day doing your various things, which I think two hours is ideal. I wish I did get in two hours consistently every day. But a half hour of that, and for me, it's usually my first half hour, because if I get nothing else done, I'd rather get that done. It does me more good than anything else. Of course, if too many days like that slacking, like that go by, then I gotta make sure I do my repertoire, but Makes it tough to get through your own songs. for this 30 minutes. You know, and you, you, I do that every day. 
I record my practicing. And then I listen to it when I go to sleep. You hear things, you know, that you don't like hearing. A lot of that. And then sometimes you hear things you like that you didn't even realize were there. That helps a lot too. And then you, you make a mental note. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna revisit that and uh, do something with that. Hope you can make it through this. And I uh, thought I'd just share my practice technique with you. I think it's a little different than, um, than the traditional. And I'm not saying you should, you should substitute it for any of your traditional stuff you're doing. Listen to your teachers. But this is something you could add to it. And you know, even if you did this, I, you know, I mean, I suggest do it at least 10 minutes a day. Just think of random chords, drop some kind of voicing down on them. If you want to know about voicings, you could ask me about that and I'll tell you how to develop some good foundations and voicings. There's some good resource material for that. And you could work on that for a few months, and then you've got your fall, your go-to voicings for like any chord. So, you know, the worst thing that'll, that'll happen is it sounds good. You know, it, it's never bad. And uh, you could use those, and then you start to just kind of not think so much of that and uh, play. You don't need the idea. The ideal thing is you hear something that sounds good to you and you don't even know how you did it. Then you know you're, you're getting pay dirt. That's, that's what you want because uh, you know, the, the magic in music and in anything I think is when it's unexplainable. So you want something to be like good and unexplainable rather than appearing to be or actually being like a sum total of your understanding, okay? It shouldn't be about understanding. It should just be a mystery. So you let, you let that part of the brain do it for you. You know, you, you don't, don't do math. Don't think of, when you're doing this half hour, don't, you know, try not to think of how you've been programmed to apply certain scale formulas to certain chords, you know, this, you can play this scale on this chord because they got a certain amount of flats or something. That, that I mean, that's all great to learn, you know, but um, also get used to playing without that so that it's just kind of, it's in there and it's working behind the scenes for you, but it just kind of goes into your wisdom, you know. You're just, that's, that's, that's what this, kind of free practice is. So we all like things that are free, right? I love free things. They also say you get what you pay for. So thank you from Lounge Academy. Um, subscribe. You could be subscriber number 38 if you're the next person to subscribe. I'm the world's worst YouTuber. I don't get any subscribers. Um, we're going to change all that though, right? The world's going to start marching to my feet, right? They're all going to change. So I'm Howard from Lounge Academy at WBIG TV. Let me know how you do with this. If you try it, um, give me some feedback on it. You know, it's not something you try. Well, I'm saying do this every day for, for forever. Like this is just like, uh, you know, you brush your teeth every day, right? You do this. 
it's how it is, you know. You're, you're stuck with it for life, and you'll watch as it just slowly builds and the ball snowball gets bigger. And I, I'm noticing I'm learning more and more now than ever and, and increasing in what I can do. You know, it, it's, it's just, uh, for, for years, you know, it could, or in my case, decades, because I'm the poster child for cannot learn to play piano. Uh, it's just kind of an exercise in faith, you know, that uh, if you keep doing this, it's going to lead to something and you just won't take your teeth off of it and let go. You just keep at it every day. If you, if you stop practicing, even for a day, you'll, you'll feel like garbage and you'll hate yourself and you won't know why. It's because you're not practicing. This is just, you're just stuck with it. So why torture yourself, right? See you next time. Please let me know uh, how you do with this or if you think it's totally nuts or if you think it's dangerous or whatever. And uh, we'll see you soon from Lounge Academy. Keep in touch. Tune in on Friday nights on my Facebook profile page. We do a live stream right from here. We did it last night. And then I post those after the fact on YouTube so you can, you can see what they're like. And then if you're ever interested in watching live and just commenting and being part of the party, it's like you're at a lounge virtually at a piano bar from anywhere in the world. And people seem to like it. And I love it when they join us because it's, it really, it's so much like they're here in the room with, at the party that after the fact, often I'm confused as to who was here and who was out there. You know, because we have a lot of people that do both. They visit in town, they stop by, and then they're avid watchers from home. And, and just like, they're, they're with me. They're with us either way to where after the fact, so often I'm confused about it. So if you don't know how to find the Facebook, just, uh, just ask. I'll put the link. It's just Howard Goldman on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Goldman Howard. And, and then just Friday nights from 7 o'clock to 11 o'clock. We stream live from here. It's one long piano bar party. It's a lot of fun. Um, that's East Coast time. We're in Buffalo, New York. So I'll stop talking. Bye, everybody.